What's good, YouTube? It's your boy P Money. So Blazers get themselves a 126-118 victory against the Utah Jazz. In the Utah Jazz, uh, what is it, Vincent Arena or something like that? But uh, I just wanted to go over the first half stats, what I saw in the fourth quarter, and that's pretty much how we gonna do it. So in the first half, Dame was cooking with uh, 19 points. He went seven of 10 from the field. He went three of four from three. He also had two rebounds, three assists, and had only one turnover. CJ was cooking too in that. Has been cooking this whole entire preseason. But in the first half, he went for 15 points on six of eight shooting. He was three of five from three, and he also had two assists. Uh, Collins was money all game, but in the first half, he went for 11 points on five of five field goals. Shot one, one from three. Had two rebounds, had a turnover, and had, had himself two blocks. Uh, Rodney Hood, another guy who went off. He was all back in the starting lineup from, uh, he had some back spasms, but it was good to see him back on, on the court. But he finished up with eight points on three of six shooting. He was over two from three, to three rebounds, three assists, a turnover, and a steal in the first half. So he was, he was everywhere. He's being a menace. White side, he was looking pretty good, especially defensively against Gobert. But he ended up having three points on one of two shooting, nine rebounds, an assist, and a block. And he ended up uh, re aggravating his ankle, but I'll get into that later on. Mitchell, he f finished up the first half with 22 points on eight of 13 shooting, goes four of four from three, and had three rebounds. So he was cooking. He was getting some. Easy looks at the basket from three. Um, when he was driving, he was he was playing really well, especially in that first half. Uh, Conley, he also played pretty well in the first half. He had ten points. He didn't shoot shoot it very well. He went three of eight, had um, one from three out of three. Had himself two rebounds and an assist. And then Gobert, he had nine points on three of eight shooting, but he also had nine rebounds. He had two turnovers and a block. And Ingles off the bench, which I think he should probably start. But he ended up with nine points on three of four shooting, went three of three from three. Had a rebound, assist, a steal, and a turnover. And then another guy off the bench, uh, Jeff Green. He was looking good. He had six points, three of six from from the field, over two from three. Two rebounds, an assist, and a block. So he was balling. Um, Moutier. He ended up playing better in the second half, but he finished up the first half with five points on two or three shooting. Goes one of one from three. Had two assists and a turnover. So that was pretty much the first half for both teams. Portland had themselves like a, they were up as much as 13 points in that first half. But the Jazz went on a nice little run, which was like 32 to 13 or something like some crazy number like that to, to close the gap. At halftime, it ended up only being a two-point game for the Blazers. But uh, like I was saying before, Whiteside re-enters that ankle in a sequence where he's going going up for a rebound, and Dame's right there, and uh, he ended up stepping on Dame's the top of Dame's foot and re-aggravating that ankle. So that was pretty much like not early in the third quarter, but it was probably like about nine minutes left or so in the third quarter and he ended up not playing and probably won't play anymore in the preseason so hopefully he goes ahead and gets on the mend and is just focused on uh, getting back for the regular season against the Nuggets and which I'm pretty sure he'll be back it's, it didn't look super bad but just want to be precautious you know since he already had that ankle injury before um there was a couple of possessions that the Blazers had where it was like Collins. Actually, no, I think it was Hanoza, um, Tolliver, Baysmore, CJ, and Dame. And they were all on the perimeter. There was nobody down low. So <laughs> the Jazz just looked like they didn't know what the hell was going on. And the Blazers ended up scoring on both those possessions. So I do like that little, that little lineup 
in certain situations, you know what I mean? If we need a quick basket or something. But after the third quarter, Dame and CJ were cooking so much that they ended up with having 25 points apiece. Um, CJ ended up coming back in the fourth quarter for a couple of minutes and scored another three to finish up with 28 on the, on the game, which was a game high. Um, like I was saying, Hazonia, he was playing really well, especially in that second half. He was pretty much one of the bigger reasons why the Blazers ended up closing out this game. Um, he ended up with 12 points on five of eight shootings, shot two of four from three. Uh, he had four rebounds, three assists, a turnover, and a steal, so he was balling. And he was scoring at all three levels, too. And for those who don't know, three levels are at the basket. He, ta- he attacked the basket. He shot well from mid-range, and he shot well from three. Um, Simons and Conley, they had a little back and forth going on that I like to see where Conley's being the Riley veteran that he is, and he ended up finishing up with 20, 20 points. But he didn't he didn't shoot it so well. But, uh, yeah, they, they had a couple of back and forths in the, in the fourth quarter where Conley, using his Riley veteran, Tactics and then Simon's using just his athleticism and and bigger frame to to get his back buckets. So I like that little matchup. That was a nice little matchup. Dame fed him a few a few times because he came back in the game as well. Ended up only with 25 points because he he was more in a facilitator mode. And like pretty much another reason was the bench puts the game away for the. For the Blazers behind guys like Kent Bazemore, like I was saying, Hazonia and Simons. So general salute to those guys, because there was a couple of times where the where the Jazz looked like they were going to make it a game, and Blazers ended up making a couple of key baskets to make it not as close as what it was in certain times. And then I had to talk about this guy, the big key, the second big key acquisition that the Jazz had in. Bogdanovich, man. He was horrible in this game. He went for 0 for 9, and I believe he was 0 for 5 from 3. He was terrible on defense. Like, Zach Collins was making him look disgusting as a defender. And he's definitely not a guy that's, <laughs> that's not but that's terrible on defense. At least he's serviceable, you know what I mean? But he was just getting cooked by everybody that was on him. Even CJ cooked him a couple times. Um, also, Joe Ingles, man. Like, he was balling, but, man, he was he was talking a lot of trash to CJ. And CJ took that shit personal. And, like I said, he led all, all scorers in this game with 28 points. And CJ ended up winning the battle and the game. So, general salute to CJ. Not backing down from that, from that smoke. Um, Emmanuel Moutier for the Jazz, man, he is definitely... The backup point guard. There is no question about it in my mind. Even when Dante Exum comes back from injury, Exum, it's just every year with Exum, he's always injured. So I would go with the guy that's steady like like Moutier. Like he played, he had five points in the first half, of course, playing against the better guys, but he looked really well, like leading the team whenever he was a playmaker because I think he ended up having the most assists on his team with six but he finished up with 12 points he had two rebounds did have three turnovers made shot three threes made one and shot five of eight from the field so he he's definitely to me he's matured a lot since his days back with the, the nuggets and i've been following him for a while since ever since last year he was over there with uh new york and he was playing really well with them as well so playing with a team like the Jazz, you know, that's in the playoff hunt, he's going to have his head right. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what Moutier can do with the Utah Jazz. I think that's a steal signing with them. But uh, for the game stats, for the team stats, Blazers went ahead and shot 48 of 83 for 58% from three, or from the field. They go 15 of 27 for 56% from the three-point land. They shoot 15 of 21 for 71 percent from the free throw line um of their 48 made baskets they have 21 assists they pull down 44 rebounds they only get three offensive 
They had four steals. They had eight blocks and 15 turnovers. For the Jazz, they shot 41 of 92 for 45% from the field. They go 14 of 30 for 47% from three, which is still high, but it's a much better showing than what they did against the Phoenix Suns. And I just like the defense that the Blazers played all throughout this game. But uh, Jazz ended up shooting 22 of 30 for 73% from the free throw line. Of their 41 made baskets, they get 17 assists. They pull down 44 boards, 12 of those offensive, four steals, three blocks, and they only have 12 turnovers. So this was an excellent game, man. Much more like what you would see in a regular NBA game. Jazz were a little bit sloppy, but once they get it together, man, they're going to be a very, very tough team to beat because they do have a lot of different ways to score now. Their problem is going to be on defense, man. In the first quarter, they were very lethargic. and Blazers ended up having like, they put up like 32 points at at one point, they ended up finishing with 38 points, but uh, Jazz needed like a super crazy run to, to make the game even close. And they ended up scoring 32 in that first quarter to make it, you know, s- semi, semi close. But like I said, they went on that big run, which was like 32 to like 13 to make it, make it a game. But other than that, I don't really have much else to say. This is your boy P Money. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to all my supporters. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. And I am off this.